What's up guys, Chris Dalsey here from The Last Checkpoint, bringing you the third installment in our Unity 3D game beginner series. In this video, I wanted to go over how we're going to set up our camera. Right now, it's in a fixed position on our screen, and I showed you last time that when we hit play, even though at first the camera's in an okay position, if the ball were ever to move off screen, we would have no idea where it went because the camera stays stationary. So in our game, I wanted to set up a camera that follows our player. Now there's a couple of other ways that we can set up the camera and I'll show you now and why they may not work for our game. Uh, the first way is actually just taking the camera, which we know is a game object and there's a little camera preview here in the right hand corner and making it a child of the player. So that wherever the player goes, our camera should go. So if I were to select the player object and move it around, the camera would move wherever the ball moves. Now, ideally, that's what we want, but because the camera is a child of the player object, this also takes into account rotation. And I'll show you why that's a problem. So we'll set this back up to zero, one, zero, and we'll hit play. And because our player is a sphere object, as we roll around, we can see the camera is moving on the rotation axis as well as the X and Z axes. I'm going to stop that before you guys get sick. So that won't work for us. We'll go ahead and take the main camera off. Save it there. Another way we can do it is we can create a script, which is the way we're going to go about this. One solution is to have the camera in the exact same position as a player object and disregard rotation. That would work for a first person game. In our case, I think we want to actually see the player move around. And so the second variable that we're going to have in our script is going to be an offset between the camera and the player so that we're always hovering just behind the player. And you'll see what I mean when we start creating our script. So for main camera, let's go ahead and go on our inspector, hit add component, start typing in camera controller. That'll be the name of our script for the camera. New script, create an add. We'll go ahead and take that script and drag it into our scripts folder. Double click to open. So here's our camera controller script. Just as we were discussing, we need two variables. We need one for the player object. So we're going to say public. And this is going to be of type game object. And we're going to call this player object. And the second variable we're going to make private. It's going to be a vector three. We're going to call this the cam offset. So the camera offset, we're going to go ahead and initialize in the start method. We'll say cam offset equals this. And in this case, this is the camera. So this, the, cam the camera's transform position, which is a vector three, minus the player objects transform dot position. So the offset is really just the difference between the position of the camera and the position of the player so that we can always keep that distance between the two, creating a simple but efficient third person camera. So we'll go down to the update and we'll say this, again, this being the camera dot transform dot position. And now for each frame, we're gonna go ahead and reset the position to the player's position but because we don't want the exact position of the player, we're going to add the offset. Control S to save. Just to quickly recap the script, we have the player object, which is public so that we can establish what that player object is outside of the script. We have a private camera offset because nothing needs to know about this offset outside of the script. In our initialization function, we initialize the camera offset as the camera's position minus the player's position, always knowing that difference between the two. And in the update function, we change the camera's position as the sum of the player's position and the camera offset. Now there's one last thing I wanna change in the script. As it said here, update is called once per frame, but there's no sense of priority between this update and other updates that we may have within our other scripts. But we know by just looking at this code that the position of the camera is dependent on the player's position. And so for this case, we wanna ensure that the player has already moved before we reset our position for our camera. And since we can't guarantee that the update in the camera controller will go after anything else, we have to make sure that it goes after all the other update calls. 
So there's actually a function that this will come after the update calls, and that's called late update. So late update will be called, we'll put a comment here, late update will be called after all other updates have been invoked. Great. So now we can ensure that this position will get instantiated after the player objects updates have gone. So let's go ahead and control S to save. Go back to our script. And you can see on the main camera that it's expecting a player object for the camera controller. We know that our player object is our player. So we'll take that. I'm just dragging the player over to here, putting it on there. So when we hit play and we move the player around, you can see the camera follows accordingly. And if we ever fall off the ledge, it still follows. Perfect. Now there's one more thing I want to change. The camera is in an okay slot, but as you can kind of see when we hit play, going forward and back isn't all that interesting, or at least it's not as interesting as how the camera in the scene view actually looks. So what I want to do is just move the camera up a little bit. We'll go ahead and position it up, let's say to five. And you can see the change here in the game screen. And five is a little high, but once we rotate it down to 45, I think it looks a little better. Let's go ahead and even move that in a little bit. I'm going to take the z-axis and move it in so that we're just over the ball. I think it, we're getting closer to negative 5. Let's see how negative 5 looks. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's see how that looks. Press play. And there we go. So now we can clearly see the ball moving in all planes. Great. I'll go ahead and stop it there. I know that video was a little short, but it was kind of an important one because now that the camera is moving with our player object, we can start establishing our play area. Right now we just have the square platform, but now that we have our camera following the player, we can really go anywhere. As always guys, if you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.